Menendez's corruption indictment for the third time. I mean, three times he's been indicted in 20 years. He and his wife, Nadine, are facing three counts of bribery and conspiracy. And prosecutors say they found hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash, gold bars, I get to say it again, stashed around the house, and he stands accused of trading United States secrets to Egypt. Menendez is now facing calls to resign from his, uh, from a choir of fellow Democrats now. But he says he isn't going down without a fight. Here he is. But the allegations leveled against me are just that, allegations. Everything I've accomplished, I've worked for, despite the naysayers and everyone who has underestimated me. I recognize uh, this will be the biggest fight uh, yet, but as I have stated throughout this whole process, I firmly believe that when all the facts are presented, not only will I be exonerated, but I still will be the New Jersey's senior senator. All right, so this was billed by his office. It was going to take part at Colin Powell Elementary School because he is the senator for Hudson County. That's where he grew up. He's a senator for more people than that. But, you know, it's, it's where the Statue of Liberty, a whole bunch of things are in New Jersey. A lot of meaning in Hudson County for the history of the state. Well, the school said, yeah, you can't have your news conference here today. We don't want it to be a distraction to the students. It's been an interesting day for the senator who's been in office for 5 oh, 50 years. And among those allegations are those providing U.S. secrets to Egypt. He had a lot to say about that, even though he was just supposed to announce that he was going to run again in 2024. Here's where he went. If you look at my actions related to Egypt during the period described in this indictment and throughout my whole career, my record is clear and consistent in holding Egypt accountable. Those who now are attempting to malign my actions as it relates to Egypt simply don't know the facts. So, Kaylee, the problem with that, uh, even talking about it, is that now they have something to compare whatever testimony he gives in the future to. You know this as an attorney. Yes, most attorneys say don't talk about the details of your case. That's what the court of law is for, especially if you're facing some really steep consequences and penalties, as he is. But what was interesting, he talked a lot about Egypt, so he must have ignored the advice of counsel if they would have recommended him not to speak on the specifics. But one thing I didn't hear about when he talked about Egypt was the allegation of sharing intelligence with the Egyptian mm -hmm. Government. Here's the allegation, page nine of the indictment. So he found out the number and nationality of persons serving at the U.S. Embassy in Cairo. The information was not classified, but it was deemed highly sensitive from the indictment. Um, and he texts this information to his wife, Nadine, who then passes it to a business partner, Hana, who then forwards it to an Egyptian government official. Hmm. Pretty big allegation. We didn't hear much about that. But I'm just glad his response improved from over the weekend. Over the weekend, he released a big statement. One of the lines from the statement, it is not lost upon me how quickly some are rushing to judge a Latino Ooh. and push him out of his seat. I am not going anywhere. So at least we've improved upon that. Kennedy. I, I, you know, it's like, call me crazy, but I don't think it's his Latino-ness that is the right. problem <laughs> here. And uh, he, he would have gone to the Latino Heritage event that he was supposed to over the weekend if that were the driving factor in his life. But it's kind of unbelievable. It's like, you know, when you have little kids and they touch a hot stove and they burn themselves, they never want to touch it again. It's kind of like instant baby proofing. But this guy has been indicted and has almost lost his career several times, mm. but is still apparently a very easy target and a very clumsy one going back to the trough once again. And it's like, you know, we're not talking about laundering money through expensive paintings or a global foundation. This is a guy apparently getting envelopes full of cash and gold bars. You know, he, he's like a, a movie villain that steps in a <laughs> bucket of paint. So you just wonder, <laughs> when will people like this learn from their mistakes? But also, you know, the electorate is looking at this going, we have a lot of corrupt people here. You know, it's from George Santos to Senator Menendez. You've got corruption all over the map. And I don't think we've really figured out what to do because asking people to resign, it doesn't work anymore. Wow. I was just going to read from the <laughs> indictment, but I'd rather listen to Kennedy. Yes. Um, so, you know, Mark, I, I will read this part because I, I just don't even know what his wife, since 2019, they've been married, 
Nadine was really doing in all of this. She, in the indictment, is alleged to have taken a luxury car, gold bars, help with her mortgage, consultant fees for facilitating the meetings between Senator Menendez and Egyptian officials. Kaylee ticked down what some of that could have included, maybe some yeah. secrets with the United States. And she said to the Egyptian officials back in March 2020, anytime you need anything, this was a text from her, you have my number and we'll make everything happen. I mean, clearly they have a paper trail. They do. Look, I have a question for everyone on the couch. Where do you keep your gold bars? <laughs> I, I, I personally keep mine under the bed, but, you know, occasionally I move them around just to make sure no one can find them. Oh, remind me to make a house visit. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, look, what, what's striking to me, in addition to what Kennedy said about the repeat offender uh, part of this, is the hubris involved. I mean, how much the impatience, the revolving door in Washington is so lucrative. He could have been a lobbyist for the Egyptian government and made that money above board. I mean, think about this. If so, $486,000 in cash, $80,000 in his wife's safe deposit box, $60,000 Mercedes, so not even top of the line stuff. He's a cheap buy. Um, and a gold bar is worth hundred. That's about $750,000. He could make that in a few months as a lobbyist for the Egyptian government. If he left, the, the, what it was is all you have to do in Washington, you can do two things. You can get rich or you can have power, but you can't have them at the same time. Oh. And so if he had just decided, I'm not going to run for office, huh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cash in like so many people do, he could have made that money all above board. But it, he, wanted, he didn't want to give up the power. And in Washington, you can't do both. Wow, that, that is quite a statement considering uh, the indictment of a president's son right now currently and the promised mm. bank records and money trail that the House oversight is dangling now along with judiciary. And, and we know that we'll hear from uh, James Comer later this week with this impeachment inquiry against Joe Biden. Mm. I mean, not that these things would ever be connected, um, but they each served about 50 years in office. That's the power part. You mix in money with that, and you're saying they can't exist. If they do, it's toxic. I have to say, though, it's not as easy to prove this case as you think. It sounds like it's open and closed. It is not. Let me tell you, the Supreme Court changed the rules in 2017, and what they said is there's a higher standard now to prove these cases. Not only do you have to say, here's what they got, here are the gold bars, here's the cash, here's the, here's the car, you also have to say, what did he deliver? What did he deliver for his clients? The Same people question who are being asked about the Biden family right now. Mm -hmm. no. You don't normally get those things without giving something in return. Those same questions. Well, what, what was the access worth? Right, exactly. And if they can't prove this, then the case isn't going to go forward. So his saying, I might be untouchable, he may be untouchable. I know that's not popular, but it's a possibility. Also, just one interesting thing uh, that we learned in the indictment as it pertained to Hunter Biden, separate case, of course, different fact pattern, but some similarities, is that um, Menendez wanted Biden to appear at an event as a vice president. And rather than reaching out to the Biden vice president's office, they reached out to Hunter Biden's business partner, Eric Schwerin. So that raises a lot of questions. You want the Veep to show up somewhere. Why are you emailing Hunter's business partner? There's so much here. <laughs> and I think it's all an argument for term limit. Amen. Yes, <laughs> on Capitol Hill. And, and we got an amen. So thank you for that. <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.